On December 3, 1989, the Woodside apartment complex in Lorton, Virginia, held its Yuletide Christmas party. The Woodside was a large but friendly complex, a community that revolved around family life and children's activities. The kids were always excited about the party, which meant special treats and presents. A single mom, Tammy Brannon, had found in the Woodside complex a safe community in which to raise her only child, Melissa. As the evening wound down, Tammy stopped to visit with a friend before going home. Go get some potato chips. Okay, we'll come right back. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yeah. Good you. We gotta get ready. Okay. She's getting so big. She is. Did you see where she went? She lost sight of her daughter for only a few seconds. But that was long enough for our mother's worst nightmare to begin. Can you see my daughter? Melissa? 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 Melissa disappeared. The Fairfax County, Virginia Police Department was called immediately. I'm going to do everything I can to find your little girl, but you have to tell me everything you can possibly Detective do. Bill Wilden assured Tammy they would do all they could to find her little girl. The detectives began questioning the people at the party. No one could recall seeing Melissa leave the party or anywhere near the front door. I'm Detective Wilden. This is Rappaport with the Richard Rappaport, the Fairfax Department search commander, joined Detective Wilden to organize the search party. If you come across anything suspicious, an article he would head up the investigation. Does everyone understand? When detectives discovered an open window in the furnace room, Jim Goldman, the crime scene investigator for the Fairfax County Police Department, was asked to examine it. The way the door was set up, everybody had to either go through the crowd to get out the front of the building. Uh, that was the, only, the main door and the only door available to get out, uh, with the exception of the, the hallway down to the bathrooms and the furnace room. They had large, uh, large windows. And in, in the furnace room itself had a, a, a window that was discovered open. And from there, the assumption was made that possibly that's how she uh, was taken from the building. Melissa's disappearance was suddenly far more complicated. The search for a missing child had become a possible abduction case. Did you see her leave the party at any time? The police continued their questioning with even greater urgency and began to hear repeated mention of the strange, even bizarre behavior of the maintenance man for the complex. What was his name? Several of the women reported how offended they were by extremely vulgar sexual propositions made to them by Caleb Hughes. There was a possibility that if she had been abducted for sexual purposes that she might be molested, but we were very, very um, hopeful that we could at least find her alive uh, before her life was in jeopardy. Now that they were dealing with a possible abduction case, detectives returned to Tammy's apartment and collected nightgowns, hairbrushes, and bedclothes, any items bearing traces of Melissa. Can you describe As detectives continued questioning the people at the party, they learned more disturbing details about Hugh's behavior that night. He had spent what seemed to many to be an unusual amount of time playing games with the children. He made the parents uneasy by touching the kids. There was something unsettling, something indecent about him. At the party, he was not dressed uh, uh, as well as the rest of the people. He wore his work clothes. Um, he mingled with some of the people he knew at the party, and he spent some time talking with Melissa's mother, uh, making comments about Melissa. And 
offered to take Melissa and a couple of the other children to the restroom if they needed to go. He just had some very suspicious behavior from a man of his age around the children. With growing suspicion, the detectives tried repeatedly to reach Hughes by phone and then went to his house, but were told by his wife that she had no idea where he might be. Were you playing with her tonight? He had left the party sometime before our arrival there. He lived only four miles away, but it took us several hours for us to contact him because he had not yet returned home. Finally, two and a half hours after Melissa's disappearance, Caleb Hughes called the police, who then returned to his house. Upon questioning, he claimed he had simply taken the long way home. The officers immediately noticed he was wearing different clothing from that reported by witnesses at the party. I washed clothes tonight when I got home. They're in, they're in the washing machine over there. In the washing machine, they found the clothes Hughes had been wearing, as well as his sneakers and a leather belt with a knife sheath. The knife was missing. You washed your shoes at 2 a.m. in the morning? Come here. He'd been gone for several hours, and to come home in the middle of the night when your family was asleep and to feel the immediate need to wash everything you had been wearing, including your shoes, we found that rather suspicious behavior, and that just further added to our our interest in, in his whereabouts. As Hughes appeared reluctant to speak in front of his wife, the officers decided to take him to headquarters for further questioning. Suspecting that Hughes might be covering for time spent with a girlfriend, the officers wanted to allow him the opportunity to tell the real story. Do you know Melissa Brandon? No, I do not. To the detective's surprise, there was no real story. Hughes had no alibi. He claimed he had no idea who Melissa was, that he had driven the long way home Why were you washing your after shoes? picking up a six pack, and then had simply washed his clothes. You normally wash your shoes with your clothes? Sometimes, yeah. What were they dirty with? He said as an excuse that, that were, they were his only work clothes and he had to be to work the next day and they were dirty, so he needed to clean them for work. Look, am I being charged with anything? Despite hours of intense questioning, Hughes remained no, smug right and evasive. I'm afraid to go. Finally, yeah, Detective to Wilden told him he was free to go, but I know you're he was almost certain Hughes was lying. Well, you're going to have to prove it then, aren't you? 